This is a reading in A Course in Miracles, Chapter 8, Section 2, The Difference Between Imprisonment and Freedom. There is a rationale for choice. Only one teacher knows what your reality is. If learning to remove the obstacle to that knowledge is the purpose of the curriculum, you must learn it of him. The ego does not know what it is trying to teach. It is trying to teach you what you are without knowing what you are. It is expert only in confusion. It does not understand anything else. As a teacher then, the ego is totally confused and totally confusing. Even if you could disregard the Holy Spirit entirely, which is impossible, you could still learn nothing from the ego because the ego knows nothing. Is there any possible reason for choosing a teacher such as this? Does the total disregard of anything it teaches make anything but sense? Is this the teacher to whom a son of God should turn to find himself? The ego has never given you a sensible answer to anything. Simply on the grounds of your own experience with its teaching, should not this alone disqualify it as your future teacher? Yet the ego has done more harm to your feelings than this alone. Learning is joyful if it leads you along your natural path and facilitates the development of what you have. When you are taught against your nature, however, you will lose by your learning because your learning will imprison you. Your will is in your nature and therefore cannot go against it. The ego cannot teach you anything as long as your will is free because you will not listen to it. It is not your will to be imprisoned because your will is free. That is why the ego is the denial of free will. It is never God who coerces you because he shares his will with you. His voice teaches only in accordance with his will, but that is not the Holy Spirit's lesson because that is what you are. The lesson is that your will and God's cannot be out of accord because they are one. This is the undoing of everything the ego tries to teach. It is not, then, only the direction of the curriculum that must be unconflicted, but also the content. The ego tries to teach you that you want to oppose God's will. This unnatural lesson cannot be learned, and attempt to learn it is a violation of your own freedom, making you afraid of your will because it is free. The Holy Spirit opposes any imprisoning of the will of a Son of God, knowing that the will of the Son is the Father's. The Holy Spirit leads you steadily along the path of freedom, teaching you how to disregard or look beyond everything that would hold you back. We have said that the Holy Spirit teaches you the difference between pain and joy. That is the same as saying he teaches you the difference between imprisonment and freedom. You cannot make this distinction without him because you have taught yourself that imprisonment is freedom. Believing them to be the same, how can you tell them apart? Can you ask the part of your mind that taught you to believe they are the same to teach you how they are different? The Holy Spirit's teaching takes only one direction and has only one goal. His direction is freedom and his goal is God. Yet he cannot conceive of God without you because it is not God's will to be without you. When you have learned that your will is God's, you could no more will to be without him than he could will to be without you. This is freedom and this is joy. Deny yourself this and you are denying God's kingdom because he created you for this. When I said 
All power and glory are yours because the kingdom is his. This is what I meant. The will of God is without limit, and all power and glory lie within it. Um... And it is boundless in strength and in love and in peace. It has no boundaries because its extension is unlimited. And it encompasses all things because it created all things. By creating all things, it made them part of it uh, itself. You are the will of God because that is how you were created. Because your Creator creates only like Himself, you are like Him. You are part of Him, who is all power and glory, and are therefore as unlimited as He is. To what else except all power and glory can the Holy Spirit appeal to restore God's kingdom? His appeal, then, is merely to what the kingdom is, and for its own acknowledgement of what it is. When you acknowledge this, you bring the acknowledgement automatically to everyone because you have acknowledged everyone. By your recognition, you awaken theirs, and through theirs, yours is extended. Awakening runs easily and gladly through the kingdom in answer to the call for God. This is the natural response of every son of God to the voice of for his creator because it is the voice for his creations and for his own extension. That is the end of the reading of chapter 8, section 2 in A Course in Miracles.